Hello, welcome back to The Scotch Mom. Today I'm going to be talking about our trip to Universal Studios Hollywood. Uh, we went last weekend for my brother's 39 and three quarters birthday. <laughs> I know, it's very clever. Yeah, it was quite the experience, especially given the fact that it was the first weekend after they lifted all, after California lifted a lot of the restrictions, if not all of them. Yeah, so uh, let's let's just dive right in and get to the good stuff. We're also gonna be tasting some scotch, of course, tonight. So uh, Universal Studios. Uh, the drive there was actually really not that bad. We left pretty early, probably earlier than we needed to, but it worked out just fine. We left, I think, around 7.15 from Huntington Beach, and it took us about 45 to like 50 minutes, 45 to 55 minutes maybe. Super easy, a little bit of traffic in LA, but really not that bad. And the parking structure is really easy. The parking was $28 for regular parking or $40 for preferred parking, of course, Hollywood. Yeah, it, it lets you out right to the city walk and then you just can walk through the city walk and it's got all the fun shops and restaurants and things. Yeah, it was, that takes you then to the security area and the security area ran pretty smoothly as well. Uh, you're allowed to bring in food and drinks. There are certain restrictions on things, but I will link that in the description so you can check that out beforehand. But for the most part, you know, I think you can pretty much bring in what you want. Uh, it's just the, the cooler, you can bring like the soft case cooler, not the hard case cooler, and then there are certain dimensions. That was really the only thing I was concerned about, which we did bring a cooler. We just brought food for the our kids. We've got the three girls and, you know, I mean, they, they you're gonna buy them like a $14 hamburger and then they're gonna eat like three bites of it. So <laughs> it's just not worth it. And they're snacking all day. So it's just, for us, we decided to pack some peanut butter and jellies, which are always a hit. So that, that worked out perfectly. And so we were able to put those in the cooler with a couple other, I think we brought some Gatorades and things and kept that cool, which is nice because then later we ended up buying one of our little chocolate frogs and we put that bad boy in the cooler and it stayed cool and it did not melt. So when, yeah, so security, super easy. Also, we brought in our own water bottles. I actually made some really cute water bottles that were all Harry Potter themed. And uh, for all of like our group that we had that went, which was some family and some friends, but they didn't care. We had, you know, we were bringing, the, bringing extra for the people we were meeting at the park. And they didn't care that we had more than even one water bottle per person. Filled up, didn't matter. So that was good too. Those were like really awesome, triple insulated water bottles. Models. I'm gonna link those as well because those I really liked those and I'm excited. Anyways, they were awesome. Uh, yeah, so we brought those in, no problem, and I would totally recommend that because I think each of the water bottles, which were maybe like maybe the 12 ounce ones, were five bucks each. And you're gonna go through those pretty quickly. And they had water stations that you could fill them up as well. I would highly recommend bringing your own water, if nothing else, it's definitely worth it. Let's see, so we brought in all of that stuff. We also brought our Keen's Wagon, which was quite controversial a few years ago at Disneyland. They banned the Keen's Wagons from the park, which was a super big bummer. But they're just so easy when you have more than two kids, or even two kids that are, you know, if you don't have one of those stacked strollers, the Keen's Wagon is fantastic. Plus you can just like continue to throw kids and or stuff in it, and it's just fantastic. It's long, it's thin, so it's easy to get through doors. It's just great, I really love it. And I couldn't find anywhere on their website to say specifically if they allowed them or not. And then the only blog posts or anything that I was able to find were from like 2018. So we went, you know, in June of 2021 and had no problems. They, you know, didn't say anything about the Keen's Wagon. It was totally fine. So that was a win. There wasn't a lot of places to sit when it came to our meal time, which we decided to go and eat at the um, Cucina Mexicana, I think it was. It was a Mexican restaurant. It was super delicious. It was really good. And I'm glad we chose it because, you know, I mean, you're gonna pay just 15 bucks a plate, no matter what you get. So, with some, you know, you're gonna get a burger that's not that great, you know, or we decided to go with this Mexican restaurant and it was absolutely delicious. I'm gonna take a sip, sorry. That's good. <sighs> 
Yeah, it was wild though. It was great in the morning, but the afternoon got wild. Um, let's see, what did we do? The first ride we went on was, oh, the, um, the Flight of the Hippogriff. So we went straight to Harry Potter World because we just love Harry Potter. Decided to go on the roller coaster and it's like, literally, I think <laughs> it is five seconds, but it was only a five minute wait at the time. So we're like, okay, great, let's go. And we went on the app. So we did download the app, we didn't do a lot on the app, but we did secure a um, virtual queue for the Secret Life, Secret Life of Pets. And they just had like time slots that you can choose from, but you couldn't access the area until you were actually on the premise. So they track you and you know, once you're there, then you can get on the virtual queue. So that was that was cool. So once we got there, we, we made that for I think like 10 to 11 or something like that. So we decided to go, we had time to go do something else first and then we would go to Secret Life of Pets. So we went to Harry Potter World, we were like five minutes, let's do this. And we thought maybe it'd be one that we could get my seven year old on. Um, but she gets a little nervous with those ones. So she said she didn't want to go after she watched it go around a couple of times. So, but there was, and you know, my brother and my husband and I decided to go. My parents stayed with our girls and then our friend stayed with his uh, daughter. Then my middle one, who's only four, was like, I want to go. And we're like, okay, are you sure? And she's like, yeah, I want to go. So she joined us and went on it and a little nervous, but then came out of it and was like, that was great. I want to do it again. I want to do it again. So I guess we know who our um, little thrill seeker is going to be. But that was fun. That was a good way to kind of kick it all off. It was, it was actually more like about a 15 minute wait, but still not that bad. They also, oh, they also have misters and fans, which made it really nice. So that was one thing Disney, I, you know, I think they could use a lot more of that because most of their rides are all, or their lines are also outside and it just gets so hot in the summertime. So they had all kinds of misters and especially in the lines, but also just throughout the park, there were several misters and fans that were so nice. It really made, you know, the, the waiting in line a lot less uncomfortable. So that was our first ride. And then we went over to, we met up with the rest of our party. And then we went over to Secret Life of Pets. And the Secret Life of Pets is over in an area that has like more kids, it's like younger kid things. But what I thought was kind of a bummer about the Secret Life of Pets is that you have like it still had a height requirement so even though most of it you're like you're walking through the house and you get to see all the characters and it's super cute i feel like that's like half the ride but it's actually not the ride but then you just sit in like this little box and it takes you on a little path and i mean it doesn't go off the ground it doesn't move around much it kind of spins a little bit like rotate side to side but i wish that they had designed it so that they didn't have to have a height requirement because our youngest didn't meet the minimum height requirement even to go accompanied. So my husband stayed with her and I mean, they had a little playground, which was nice, like literally just a little playground, slides and um, jungle gym kind of thing. So he just stayed with her there, but it felt like there could have been a way that they either let you leave after you walked through the whole house or something because it was really cute and I know she loves that movie and she would have loved to see all the characters in like their setting and kind of you know to get to go inside the apartments and I don't know I think she would have like enjoyed that I mean I think she would have enjoyed the ride too it was not that crazy but I thought that was kind of silly why they had a height requirement on that one. Um, they also had the same thing for the uh what is it not the it's not minions but it's the Anyways, it's gonna come to me later, I'll get there. <laughs> but that one also had a height requirement, which was super weird because I think it was a similar situation. We didn't end up going on that one because by the time we got out, we wanted to meet up with my husband and our youngest and just kind of see what we were gonna do and then maybe go on the tram because we wanted to do the whole, you know, studio tour thing. So, but I think we had a little bit of time and there was like this bug. I mean, it was similar to that Dumbo ride and stuff at Disneyland, but it's basically like these little bugs and you get in the bugs and then it's like takes you around and it's just, you know, you go up and then you can control it while you're inside. So we decided to take all the little ones on that one since it seemed like something fun that they could do that wasn't like a surprise. Oh, guess what? P.S. This is actually kind of scary, which 
happened on a couple of them. Uh, we'll get there. But they also had a huge, I don't know if it was huge, but a nice sized water area, like a water park area. So if you are trying to stay the whole day there, you might wanna go do that at some point in your day and bring a change of clothes so the kids can just kind of run around and do whatever they want, get some energy out and just have fun. I mean, I have a feeling it's gonna get even more and more packed because it was pretty crazy, especially starting in the afternoon. But I mean, it was warm enough in the morning to go and do that whole thing. So that you could have done that as well. There was, you know, several people in there. So that was cool. The tram was interesting. I mean, it's been years since I've been to Universal Studios and Hollywood. And it was, I don't know, it was it was interesting. Like there were, we we're, you know, again, we're like, this is the tram, you know, it's gonna take you around, show you the sound studios, it's fun. And my brother had gone a few weeks ago with some friends who also have kids. I think their youngest is seven. And they said there were, he said there were a few spots and we're a little bit, you know, like, man, I'm not so sure about it. Um, and we had, let's see, we had like a two and a half year old, two four year olds and seven year old. And the first like scary one that it, it was, it's like they go, you go into a sound studio and it was part of their, you know, it was like all about uh, Godzilla and he's fighting T-Rex. And I haven't seen the movie, so I'm sure it has something to do with the movie. But it's like this all, it's all projected on over the screen, this like, you know, in this, you know, sound studio thing above you. So it looks like it's all happening above you and it's all 3D glasses. So I don't know, 3D glasses kind of tripped me out a little bit. I don't know, I guess I'm getting old, but it, I, it was, it was a little intense. It's so loud. So the kids, we're not digging that. My seven-year-old, I on it was honest to God, I was worried she was gonna try to jump out of the tram. She was screaming bloody murder. I, and that, so I had to put her on my lap because I was honestly afraid she was gonna try to like run for it. <laughs> and then the other ones were not doing well either. But I mean, you know, after at, at the end of all of this, just so you know, we had a smile on their faces and they were fine. I mean, I don't think we traumatized them too bad. I think Maybe we'll hear about it later in therapy, but I think it'll be just fine. Uh, so a little scary on that one. And then there was another one. Let's see, there was the Jurassic or the Godzilla one. And then it took the Jaws one, the Jaws thing where they take you down. That's not scary. There's like big, you know, water where they're showing you how the water, how they make water and um, how they make it look like it's raining or a big, you know, rushing stream and all that kind of stuff. That was super cool and interesting and the kids were fine with that. Even though it kind of moved the tram a little bit, they didn't seem too scared with that. It was really just when they took us in, into the sound stages and it was like everything's over you and it was so loud and it's shaking the tram. It was a little much. And even my parents were kind of like, I don't know, like I feel like off after doing that. So I think it'd be, I mean, you know, I think it'd be nice if they kind of had an option not to do just those sound studios. If you could just like pass those by because you could just do a little shorter tour do most of the stuff just not inside those sound studios i think that'd be better for young kids and for older adults um but just a little recommendation for universal studios hollywood <laughs> yeah so there was that one there was the uh, fast and furious that was in one of the sound studios that was kind of like you know on the still on the tram ride it was a little bit you know loud and it's kind of scary uh, not as bad as the other one though I feel like there's another one that I'm missing. But either way, there's like at least a few of the inside the sound studio that was like, oh, there was the one where the like train comes in and it, it, like you're in a subway station and then there's a train that's like coming at you, but it's all fake. I don't know. I feel like the young kids can't really see much of that, but it might be a little bit scary for them. But we like to emphasize like, oh, look, now it's on rewind and check it out. Now it's going backwards and it's going to reset for the next people. See how it's totally fake. It's not real. It's okay. This is how movies are made. It's super fun. Uh, so we try to emphasize that on the tram to help with them not being so scared. Uh, but it was really more so the four and two, or the four year olds and I think the two year old. Well, the two year old fell asleep on me, so that means she's fine. Anyways, so that was that one. I mean, we waited about an hour for that one. All the lines started getting pretty crazy towards the afternoon. So we really just, I mean, after the tram, we were starving. It was, you know, we had waited an hour and then it was about an hour. I think it takes like, I don't know, I feel like 40 minutes. It's about a 40 minute 
ride. So by that time, we were really hungry. So we went and got lunch after that, and we definitely had, I mean, we waited quite a while after we got our food, and I don't believe that you can order the food on the app like you can at Disneyland. At least I don't think we could do that, and if we, if we did, we missed that part. And if you can, I would definitely recommend doing that, but I didn't see anything where people were coming up from like mobile orders and stuff, so I don't know. But anyways, yeah, we waited a really long time, but we got beer with our lunch, so that's nice. They had beer and different alcoholic beverages all throughout the park, and you could walk around with them. So that was nice for adults that are going to have, be able to relax with a little bit of, you know, beverage. Yeah, but the food was really good at that Mexican food restaurant. I would highly recommend that one. That was really, really yummy. And then after we had lunch, everyone was pretty tired, and we lost one of our, um, we lost one family in our party. They decided to head out. The little one was a little bit <laughs> rattled, I think, from the ride, but she'll be fine. Uh, and then, so we decided to do the Kung Fu Panda little thing, and then go back to Harry Potter World and get to do some of the spells because our seven-year-old got her, got her first wand, got a wand, because she finished the first Harry Potter book. So, that was her reward. Um, I honestly didn't think she was gonna finish the book, but I was really proud of her, so she got she got her wand. So we went to the Kung Fu Panda was decent ride. I mean, it's in a it's in a movie theater like thing, but the seats moved, so each kid or each person had to sit in their own seat, which I thought was kind of dumb because again, the little ones are sitting in these seats that are shaking like quite a bit. They're shaking a lot and I don't know, I didn't see why you couldn't just have them on your lap. They'd be a lot happier. Our four-year-old was sitting next to me and our two-year-old was sitting next to my husband and it was moving a lot and they were, you know, kind of scares them a little bit, even though it's, it's very loud, everything's super loud. It's not scary stuff necessarily, but it's just loud and everything's moving and it kind of freaks them out a little bit. So I think they should let them sit. I ended up getting my four-year-old. She just came and sat on my lap because she was scared. So they didn't say anything to me, but I did see other parents with kids that were leaving. So I don't know, I think maybe they could, I don't know, change that rule a little bit or fix something because that, that wasn't so kid-friendly. Kung Fu Panda should be kid-friendly. I think I need to drink the scotch. Delicious. Yeah, so it de I'd say around noon is when it got wild. And that's when we noticed everything was crazy and the tram what like when we were looking at going on the tram all the other rides like Jurassic Park and all of the other cool rides that we were thinking about going on just like maybe even the adults were already up to like 90 minutes I think when we were getting lunch there was I I want to say it was the Jurassic Park one, it was at like 180 minutes, something insane. Like you're gonna spend nearly three hours in line on a ride, I don't know. That was, it was just such a bummer because I would have liked to go on some of those, but I don't know, spend, I mean, you just can't do that when you have kids. So I don't know, maybe another time or maybe go in an off season. I think we just kind of got that like rough timing when it came to, <laughs> We had our reservations and everything, expecting it or hoping kind of that it was gonna be limited capacity. And don't get me wrong, I'm super glad that, you know, all the, you know, mask restrictions and things have been lifted, but it kind of was a bummer that, you know, we didn't get to enjoy that at Universal having limited capacity. So if you did get to enjoy that, that's awesome. And I'm glad it worked out. Um, but for the rest of us, I would plan accordingly, and if you have not yet planned your trip, I would probably try to go during the week if you can. And the summer is probably gonna be pretty crazy, so if you can wait until September, I don't know about you, we're on year-round school here, which is fantastic, and we have like a fall break, that would have probably been a good time to go too. Um, but we are specifically trying to go right now because it was the 39 and three quarters. It worked out because my brother turns 40 in September, so. Anyways, um, yeah, I'd say that's kind of, I think that's all I had. Um, <clears throat> the other thing was we went to, after we did the Kung Fu Panda, then we went back to Harry Potter World to get to, um, you know, do all the fun. She got the wand that does all the 
magic at the different places. So she wanted to go back there and do some more magic, which was fun. And um, so we went around and did that and the kids had fun with that. They enjoyed that. We got butterbeer, of course, you gotta get butterbeer when you're you know, at Hogsmeade. And um, that was good, yummy. We went into um, the tavern there, I'm forgetting the name of it, but um, it was super cute. And that also looked like it had really good food too, I have to say, but it's heavy. So I definitely wouldn't advise going there and eating something, like if you're going on crazy rides and stuff, but maybe just if you're wanting for like a nice dinner before you leave the park, that might be where you wanna go. But I don't know if I would recommend eating there and then going and trying to do rides. It was, looked delicious, but it was definitely like heavier, hard and kiwi, you know, yum, yummy, yummy, yummy food, but also very heavy. Uh, so we had some butter beer and there was a nice little area to sit. There's lots of different sp spaces to sit there at that time, which was probably around like five-ish. Uh, and then I promised our girls uh, ice cream and they did an amazing job. Again, they did an amazing job at Disneyland and they did an amazing job here. And here's my key. I'm gonna give you my little tip for all those parents out there who, you know, are worried their kid's gonna freak out. Um, when we're at theme parks, I don't really say no. I don't want to fight with my kids when we're at a theme park. It's just not the time, you know? Like, I'm gonna discipline them tomorrow, and you know, it's not as much fun because maybe they're, you know, coming off of their sugar high, but you know, like, then I'm at home, and I don't have a bunch of people staring at me when my kids freaking out. Like, they can scream their little heads off at my own house, but I don't want to deal with that when I'm at a theme park, so. I bring stuff that I know they like, not things that I'm gonna have to force them to eat. If they don't wanna eat something, I don't make them eat it. And I give them lots of sugar all day. <laughs> really starting in the morning with probably a breakfast cereal that I don't love feeding them, but that's what they eat in the car because they'll eat it in their snack cups and it's easy. And then, you know, they'll be fine. So that's my little tip. It's super, super, you know, um, you know, innovative, uh, new. No one's ever thought about it ever before. So I'm gonna, you know, copyright that. And yeah, you know, that's how it works on the But anyways, that's what works for us. It doesn't work for everybody and that's totally fine. Some people wanna be strict with their kids, even at the theme parks, or sometimes all the sugar doesn't work for your kid and makes them go crazy. And then they're, they're just horrible. But I just don't, I don't know, I just don't say no. So if they want something, I pretty much give it to them unless it's like, you know, those huge ass lollipops because those things are just ridiculous. And I always just find something else that I know is gonna be neater and, but they'll still enjoy and they still love. And I'll let them have that. So we got like rock candies to distract them from the huge lollipops that they wanted. And they only took like five licks of their little rock candy and then they were like, okay, I'm done with it for now and I'll try, you know, maybe I can have it later. I'm like, okay, I'll save it. And that was fine. Um, but other people's kids are different. Not everyone is, you know, so it might not work for you, but that works for us. And they did great and we had a great time. So, but I, you know, again, it was definitely crazy. So pack your patience and be prepared for that. And especially with the younger kids, I'm not quite sure I'm gonna be making a trip back to Universal anytime soon, mostly because just for our ages of the kids, our kids, it's just not quite, we're not quite there yet. So anyways, that's my little review on um, Universal and thanks for watching that. Now we are going to move on to our scotch tasting for today. So today we are tasting now I'm also tasting in this super cute glass. I'm going to come up close, see if you can see it. I know it's probably that light is going to be funky on it, but my husband got me a etched, personalized etched Glencairn glass. It's a Scotch mom. So sweet. I love it. Super cute. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be drinking out of my new special, special glass today. And we are, uh, we are tasting Brook Laddie. And this is a, I wanted to leave it in here because our beautiful scotch cabinet here, it's right in here. So here it is, Brook Laddie. And this is the um, Isla Barley 2011. So usually the Brook Laddie comes in like this really pretty teal tin. And this one still came in a tin, but it was a gray tin. It matches, it matched the, um, the 
a label here. Uh, so what makes this unique compared to the other ones, I think is that this all comes from, the, the barley all comes from farms on Isla. And it's something that they are working to, to get more and more um, local farmers to really heighten the terroir of the, um, of the region and, and that also then affecting the scotch, which, you know, I mean, anyone who knows anything about wine understands how the terroir of the land where it's being farmed makes a huge difference with your grapes. Not only is it the weather uh, that has effects of, you know, on the grapes, but it's the location. Is it close to the ocean? Is it, you know, farther inland where you've got, you know, more desert conditions? All these things play a part in the way the grapes develop and the way they taste. And the same thing goes for the barley. So the barley that they use to make the scotch, when it's produced I think Brooke Laddie's, you know, kind of their, not theory, but their, anyways, how they want to, their thought on it is that they get local barley. It's going to represent the area in which they are producing and distilling the scotch. And I love that. I think that's, that's awesome. That's something that, you know, I, I wish we did in all areas of, of life. Um, farm to table kind of situation, um, but with distilling. So let's go ahead and give it a taste. Also, this is what's interesting here is that it's only aged for six years. And it's aged in oak casks, distilled in 2011 and bottled in 2018. And it lists the different farms that it, the barley came from, which is really cool. And this is a single malt scotch whiskey. So you can tell that it's lighter. Like there's a lot of um, scotches when they're aged longer, usually they're gonna be a little bit darker. Um, and that just that just happened. So this one's pretty light. It's got like a nice um, honey look to it. Uh, and we also noticed that when we did our tasting of the Nick Offerman with the Guinness, finishing the Guinness cast, I gotta finish that video. It's probably gonna come out after this video because um, I wanna get this one out ASAP, but we noticed that one was also just a tad bit lighter than our regular log of woolen. And that one was only like aged 11 years, the other one was 16. So with the Brook Laddie, this is only aged for six years. So you can tell that it's lighter, but it still has a beautiful color in there. Mm. It's got a really nice mouth feel. Oh, I didn't do it with my okay. And that one's strong, that one gets you. Some of them, some scotches, I can literally put my nose all the way in the glass and it's great. I can take a full deep breath and it's great. And I can get all the flavors. Other ones I'll do the same thing with and I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna die. <laughs> like it's gonna choke me out. So I don't know, I'm, I'll, I'll look into that, what that's all about. But um, this one kind of got me a little bit. I took a nice deep breath and it's pretty strong. So then you just kind of, a little bit farther back, Then you can kind of control it. It's going to fill your nostrils. Nostrils, such a great word. And that's just awesome. I get like apricot. Mm. Almost like slightly. Mm. You can taste, or you can smell like a... You definitely get fruit on the nose. Um, but again, it's, you got to be careful with that one. So don't go in there and take a big old nice deep breath inside this glass because it'll get you. So go easy on that, but it's it's really nice and I'm definitely getting some fruit on the bouquet. It's really light. It's it's very, very nice. It's like a, um, I'd say it's got like a medium body, um, medium, uh, medium bodied, the mouth feel, it's, I mean, it's slightly oily, but not too dry. It really doesn't dry your mouth out like, like some will. Um, I'm still getting that fruit. I'm still getting some fruit on the flavor palette. And um, gosh, I mean, I know I read about this and so now I'm like trying not to taste ocean. Not like ocean, but that 
ocean essence, I guess. I don't know, it's not salty, it's fresh and crisp, I guess. That would be a better way to describe it, but it is really delicious. Again, not too heavy, it's definitely not a heavy bodied um, scotch. It is, you know, it's really nice. This is a good daytime scotch. I wish I could drink scotch in the daytime. Mm. Maybe someday. Mm. I do, I mean, now I'm looking at the color and it's reminding me of honey, but I do get a little bit of honey on there too. It's really, really nice. That's just delicious. Well, that's about all I got for you. So thanks again for watching the Scotch Mom, uh, my episode about Universal Studios, my brother's 39th and quarter's birthday, and our tasting of Brook Lottie, 11 year Isla Barley. I'm sorry, not 11 year, 2011 Island Barley. Delicious, super good. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. I've got some more videos coming out soon. I think you're gonna enjoy, so click, 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 click. All right, have a good night. Bye.